Today we want to talk about CWD. I mean, it's a, been a hot topic for a long time. And since we just finished up our EHD video, if you have any questions about epizootic hemorrhagic disease, check out the link below and watch that video. It's great stuff. But CWD is totally different from EHD. So EHD we know is caused by uh, the colicoides little gnat, and that is viral. CWD, chronic wasting disease, is not at all. It's caused by a prion. And what the heck is a prion? Well, first of all, CWD is a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. I know that's a big word. And what does it really mean? Well, basically it means that if you pull the skull off a deer infected with CWD, the brain looks spongy. Now let's talk about the prion real quick. I know it's just a, you know, that word means nothing to most of us. Basically the prion is a protein, specifically a glycoprotein. And what happens is that, that prion, that protein, actually is misshapen, it's folded over. And that folded over protein cannot be processed by the body, it can't be eliminated, and so it continually builds and builds and starts to cause all this neurologic problem. In a nutshell, that's it. So again, it can be totally separated uh, from EHD. Matter of fact, the only thing they really have in common is that the deer ends up dead, <laughs> usually on, on both ends. Definitely for CWD, EHD does have you know a low 10% survival weight rate, but um, CWD does not. It is definitely going to be fatal. So you have this deer, it's infected, it has this prion, and what happens is once it has that prion, that prion is now able to go up to other like proteins that are healthy and cause them to fold too. And so it just keeps progressing that way and progressing that way over time until you have built up enough that it is now causing all of these issues. And so what are some of the signs and symptoms that you can expect to see? Well, one of the first things you see is repeated behavior. You'll start noticing a deer walking in circles or uh, keep on repeating the same pattern of whatever, walking up and down the same lane. Sometimes they're just staring with a blank look on their face out in the middle of a field or in a road or in your yard. Um, they may even keep their head down and just have that blank stare, kind of like a postured sideways look, almost like they're drunk and not moving. But you know, when they're starting to get into the later stage, what you really start to notice is they're emaciated. You got this tons of weight loss and that eventually is what's going to start to lead Lead to their death. You know, they have all this neurologic breakdown, their brain is basically turning into a sponge, and so they are on their way out at the end of the disease. We've known about CWD really was identified in the 60s, um, but we've known about prions and their effect even in humans from as far back as the 1920s. If you know anything about uh, Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease, you know that is basically the same thing in humans. It is not the same prion. Let's be clear, I'll stop here real quick just to say people cannot get CWD. It is not transmissible. And so, you know, the, the point I'm making here is it, I don't feel that it's something that we should be afraid of. I think that you should be aware of what it is, how to handle it, um, some of the things you can do to possibly prevent that. I mean, we already know that for EHD, there's really no cure. There is a vaccine for domestic animals, you know, cows and such that uh, prevents EHD. For CWD, no matter what, there's nothing. There's absolutely no cure. There's no vaccine. There's no magic pill. Um, it is just going to happen. And when it does, into a community of deer, it is highly contagious. So that prion not only can be be passed by saliva, but it can be passed by feces, it can be passed by urine, and this can actually go into the soil and remain active in the soil for years and years. It's even resistance to burn, it even has resistance to burning. And if you really want to have your mind blown, there's plants that can pick up and keep that protein in their leaves so when they're ingested by the whitetail, they too can get CWD. So it's really kind of interesting if you look at the big scope of CWD and how it can uh, affect your deer population. You also need to know that in, if you're hunting a CWD area, your state will have a plan in place for what you need to do for testing of that animal in that area, for reporting it, and in some areas you may have to turn everything in but the meat or just the head. 
So just make sure that you are aware of how your state is responding if you're in a CWD area and what you need to do uh, to combat that. Also, even though it's not transmissible to humans, the recommendation by the science community is that you do not eat CWD infected meat. Now, what's the big deal, right? They've said that it's not transmissible, you can't get it. Why is there all this caution? Well, it's kind of like other diseases where sometimes I think they really don't know absolutely everything. Again, I don't think there's anything to fear. There's been some extensive studies on CWD and its transmission to humans, and it wasn't until they totally manipulated these, this protein that they could get it to take effect in a human. So as natural transmission would be eating the meat, being exposed to uh, blood or body fluids, there has been absolutely zero proof that it can be transmitted to humans and most other animals as well. Your dog is safe. I'll get that question first thing. Your hunting dog, your tracking dog, they are safe from CWD. If you just know a few simple facts, especially how to dispose of the spinal column and the head of your white tail and know your state's regulations, it can really help you be part of the solution and not part of a continuing problem, especially since this prion is so resilient, even being buried or burned. So you wanna make sure that you're following your regulations, take the precautions, and good luck in the field.